So I'm here with Dave Richardson in his garage studio at home. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you uh, learn how to do sculpture? Um, well, my dad was the foreman at Den Osmo Studios. And when I was probably like eight or nine, he brought home some clay. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since that, I've just been playing with it, you know? So, since I was like nine. But I, I grew up drawing and painting and illustrating and all that kind of stuff, so. Clay was the next best thing after that, so. And, uh, I mean, what what do you really love about sculpting that makes you keep doing it? Oh, what do I love about it? I love everything about it. It's fucking just what I love. I don't know. You know, it's, uh, it's just the way I interpret things from my head to my hands is best best done through clay, so. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, this piece back here behind you, this is a, a clay from a piece that you did recently. Can you tell me some about, something about that? Yeah, it was um, it was a collaboration piece I did with Brian Viveros and Dan Quintana, who are uh, two pretty well-known painters in Los Angeles area. And it was based off of one of their paintings that they collaborated on, which is actually right here. So the, those are kind of the specs that I got um, and based it off of that. Awesome. Um, it's pretty close. Yeah, so Viveros, if you're not familiar with his work, he usually always has really beautiful women with either cigars or cigarettes. Okay. Um, and uh, Quintana does a lot of uh, really kind of abstract, um, kind of Art Nouveau-ish, uh, neoclassic kind of stuff. But so their two styles mesh together is what produced that, and then they had me sculpt it. Awesome. For, for a big show that they do together called Desensitized at Copper Gallery every year. Uh, and so that's where this was unveiled. And then it went to Art Basel in Miami, and then it went to Scope in uh, New York City. Well, the first awesome. one sold. And then the second one uh, is just kind of floating around and now waiting to be sold. Awesome. So is this like a limited edition? There's only a certain number of them? or? Um, you know, we'll just kind of do them and, and until they... Until we're kind of done, you know. I mean, if they keep selling, we'll just keep producing them. But you know, we'll, we'll, that's yet to be seen. I mean, we, we sold one, so uh, and it's. A, I mean, it's a pretty big piece. So. Yeah, it's a substantial yeah, investment. It was quite a bit of money, and it goes on a big ass stand, you know, which is you know even more money. So awesome. So yeah. let's uh let's talk about some of your other stuff that you have in here. Like, what's this piece? Uh, that's what's a piece that? called An Age of Innocence, um, and that was just kind of a quick vision I had. Um, I, t I typically tend to sculpt from real quick flashes, you mm -hmm. know, that I, I either wake up out of a dead sleep with or, or I'll be doing something different and then I'll have it kind of just pop into my head real quick. Uh, and typically I never draw anything down. I just have the vision in my head and it's there and then I'm set to go and then I just kind of zone out and get my clay and, and, and start, you know. But, but the piece is representing um, uh, kind of losing innocence through childhood, you know, mm -hmm. he's got a Glock and a teddy bear, so it's kind of uh, parallels of uh, good and bad. Yeah, it's an amazing piece. Yeah. So this is your home studio, right? And you do have another studio that you work out of. Yeah, down in Loveland, I do a lot of stuff um, in and out of Ken Olberg's studio. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a ton of space, and we've got a really good working relationship, so uh, if I need to use his area, I can. Awesome. Um, because as you can see in here, it's kind of getting cluttered. So. Yeah, <laughs> but it works, you know, you're comfortable at home. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, it, yeah, for sure. So, I, I mean, I remember we used to work at the foundry together in Berthoud, yep. and you sculpted, like, Vikings and all kinds of neat stuff. Yeah. So, like, since, since then, I mean, that was a while ago, yes. how have you grown as an artist? <laughs> like, what do you see the big differences are in your artwork from, like, when you started and where you um, are now? Well, I've definitely gotten a lot better. <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, well, when I first started, and I, I, I don't have any formal training, you know, I, don't, I never went to art school or anything like that. I graduated high school and, and went straight, straight into working in different studios. Um, I used to build my armatures with whatever the fuck I could find, uh, colored pencils. Uh, I, I never really <laughs> had any sculpting tools, so a lot of my early works are really stiff and um, kind of forced in a way. And I didn't really have the uh, the creative 
freedom and in thought process developed in my mind as to how to just create rather than you know draw something and be like this is exactly what I'm going to do transfer my drawing to clay so a lot of my earlier works are pretty stiff I would say and, and uh, my work now is a lot more um, free flowing and uh, there's a little more technique to them with textures because I have proper tools and proper armatures so I can do a lot more now Awesome. So, yeah. So, since since you were younger, your style's changed a lot, and now you're doing things like this sculpture here, which is the clay for the sculpture Eve. Yep. Can you tell me something about this sculpture and the series that it goes with? Uh, yeah. Well, um, this is my interpretation of Eve after the mold, so it's kind of destroyed, but, um, so I got invited to do a show in downtown Los Angeles at a gallery called Lethal Mounts. The show was called Demons. Um, it was like Chet Czar, Vincent Castiglia, and Dan Harding, and me, and Tadim, and a bunch of other people. Eric, Eric De La Vega uh, curated it. But anyway, uh, so this is my interpretation of Eve, uh, you know, with the snake on her base, and I gave her some antlers, and um, just kind of made her kind of gnarly, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do an Adam as well, so I so I can have an Adam and an Eve, um, and I'll probably do kind of the same thing, you know, give them kind of a crazy skull face and uh, an anatomically correct body, <clears throat> uh, and kind of put him on a base as well, and then kind of have the bases sit back to back so their backs are facing each other. Mm -hmm. um, so is this is this piece for sale on your website? Are you are you replicating it or? Yeah, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I cast it in bronze uh, and then did a silver nitrate patina on it, but I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do an addition of seven of them, so they definitely are available um, to the public, uh, but yeah, you can go on our website and for inquiries or whatever, so. Okay, and what's your, what's your website address? It's uh, www.daverichardsonart.com. Awesome, and I did watch your video about the patina, and that's an yeah. amazing process, I've always been fascinated with that it process. It is, it's crazy. So, What's the difference between maybe a sculpture like that and something like these here that we photographed earlier um, as far as like the, the designing, making, casting process, like the material um, and stuff? Well, with these Mjolnirs, uh, <clears throat> that's a lot more tedious and time consuming because it's so small and I have really big hands so it kind of uh, makes it harder. <laughs> but um, it's the same process. I mean, it, I just use a, an oil-based clay and, and sculpt them, and uh, mold and it's them. a lost cat, a lost wax casting, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mold them with like a ur urethane or a silicone, and then I pour wax in the molds, and uh, that goes to the foundry and gets busted and gets burned out. Hence the lost wax process. And then you get metal and you shine them up and you sell them. Awesome. So those are made out of something that's obviously jewelry, jewelry quality material, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, this is a silver-based pewter. Mm -hmm. um, pewter used to be lead-based, but uh, you can't do that anymore. So now they either do it with uh, tin or silver, but this is a silver-based pewter. Uh, and then this is bronze here. <clears throat> so. Okay. And these are, you can buy these on your website too, right? Yeah, they're, well, they're not, yeah. Well, they're they're going to be for sale soon? For sale. Yeah, this is the first kind of look at them here. I just got these bag like two days ago, so. Awesome. Um, but yeah, they will be available, so, yeah. And are you doing like a limited number of those, or are those just like as, as I'll they come out? I'll probably do a limited edition of the bronze. I'll probably do like 25 of them, and then the pewter, all, all my pewter jewelry is usually um, uh, open edition, so they're always available, mm -hmm. as long as the mold lasts. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, we really like enjoy your work. I th I've known you for a long time, and I was yeah. excited when you found me again and yeah. offered to sure. let me take some pictures of I'm your stuff. It so, all works out. yeah, yeah. yeah excellent. You. Thank you.